Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for everyone who's attending our third session of SASCOM seminar series in composite materials. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker, Professor Akira Todoroki, who is now a full professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, School of Engineering, Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan. Um, today, I will just give a short background about Professor Todoroki. I'm sure he will uh, refer himself later on. Um, Professor Todoroki received his bachelor, master, and PhD degrees from Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan. He worked briefly as a researcher in uh, Nagoya Aircraft Work with Subisi Heavy Industry and then joined TIT as a faculty in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And then, uh, which he serves until today, he was also a visiting researcher at the University of Florida between 1995 to 1996. He actually visited Saudi, Saudi Arabia twice, specifically Kaus. First visit was in 2013 for giving a talk at the international workshop, workshop organized by Professor Lubino, it was SEMAM. And then second visit was in 2014 for giving a training on the electrical uh, characterization of damage in composite materials. He won a Hayashi Award, uh, quite, uh, quite highest recognition for the researchers working in composite materials in Japan from Japan Society of Composite Materials in 2000. And he won numerous best paper awards from American Society of Composite, Sampei Japan, GSAS, GSCM, JRPS, and so on. And then he, his research interests include 3D printed composites, self-sensing composite, and optimizations of composite structures. Today's presentation is titled 3D Composite, 3D Printed Composites, Current Development and Future Trend, where he will discuss recent development of 3D printed composites and the current trend of 3D printed Composite products. Without further ado, Professor Tadorogi, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your nice introduction, Arif. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, uh, this slide showed the uh, spring season in my university. Uh, in the spring season, uh, maybe in the middle of March, uh, we can see this uh, very beautiful uh, cherry blossoms in my campus. Okay, let's start uh, my talk about uh, 3D printed composite and feature. Uh, this slide shows the outline of my today's talk. Uh, first, I, I want to talk about uh, self-introduction, just a brief one, and after this, I want to talk uh, uh, 3D printed composite and the current technology and researches in my lab. I think this will take a long time. So, and uh, after this uh, future talk. First, uh, <clears throat> before uh, self-introduction, I just want to uh, explain about Japan. Uh, maybe most of you, uh, in the Saudi Arabia here, you are here, and uh, Japan locates here. And this is uh, almost entire Japan, and uh, Tokyo locates just the middle of Japan. <clears throat> so the Tokyo Institute of Technology, my university, uh, locates just uh, south part of Tokyo. Uh, in the center of the Tokyo, uh, you know, the, uh, there is uh, um, Emperor Castle. So the uh, south part of Tokyo, uh, our, uh, our campus located in the south part of uh, Tokyo. Oh, sorry. So uh, this is my self-introduction, but I think uh, <clears throat> the introduction was already done. So I would like to omit this one. But, uh, uh, I visited Kaos in 2013, and I think I visited again uh, 2014, maybe. <clears throat> so I visited uh, Saudi Arabia uh, two times. So let me start my talk. Uh, let's talk about uh, compost. Uh, maybe most of you, uh, have the experience uh, that can see that it, you can 
you may see these uh, figures. The abscess shows the uh, specific stiffness. Uh, the young modules is divided by the uh, density. And the ordinate is a specific strength. Uh, the fracture strength is divided by the density. And many uh, metallic materials locates around here. Uh, I think the uh, steel locates around here, and aluminum here, and titanium here. And uh, <clears throat> you can see that uh, grass fiber reinforced plastic has a, a very high strength, but the uh, stiffness is low. So um, grass fiber reinforced plastic locates here. And you can see the carbon fiber reinforced plastic has a very high uh, specific stiffness and specific strength. So the carbon fiber reinforced plastic is a very, um, very lightweight and um, hard, I mean, uh, stiff, high stiffness and um, high strength, uh, very good materials. But the drawback is a high material cost. So the uh, CFRP carbon fiber reinforced plastic is limited to the aircraft structures. <coughs> oh, sorry. But if we uh, <coughs> focusing uh, on the uh, 3D printed uh, materials, uh, let's compare the 3D printed uh, composite here and the 3D printed uh, steel, standard steel here, uh, the uh, ordinate shows the cost of power weight. <clears throat> so the uh, price is completely reversed. Uh, the, the price of composite materials, CFRP, is very cheaper, uh, cheaper than the uh, metallic products. Uh, you can easily imagine of this uh, reason, uh, because uh, metal, 3D print metal uh, requires quite high temperatures. And uh, so that means uh, higher energy is required to obtain the metal melting temperatures. And uh, uh, of course, the uh, furnace is also uh, must be filled with inert gas or vacuum. Uh, to pre prevent oxidization. So the uh, <clears throat> cost of uh, 3D printing uh, of the uh, metallic materials is very high compared to the uh, CFRP. Uh, so uh, 3D printed products, for the 3D printed products, uh, the CFRP is uh, lower cost, has a lower cost than the uh, metallic materials. And from the uh, perspective of, of the uh, global environment issues, uh, the, as you can see that uh, metal 3D printers uh, requires much more energies uh, during manufacturing uh, because uh, it have to uh, merit the uh, metallic materials. <clears throat> so the energy is required energy is very large uh, compared to the uh, uh, fused filament fabrication of uh, thermoplastic composite. And the products uh, made from the composite have become lighter than uh, made, made of metal because the uh, <clears throat> density is uh, quite different. So the uh, 3D printed thermoplastic composite has a, a very big chance to reduce the carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and uh, in addition, the, uh, the thermal plastic resin, uh, it can be completely recycled. So the uh, 3D printed composite, uh, very good materials for the uh, SDGs. SDG means the uh, sustainable development goals. So, uh, so far, that we have many uh, commercially available uh, 3D printers. Uh, the first one is a uh, Mark Force uh, producing USA. The first one is uh, uh, 
Mark Wang. Uh, the Mark Wang was uh, sold in 2015. And after this, the company uh, in USA, Aribo, <clears throat> started to sell uh, this type of uh, very big 3D printers, the robot prints uh, composite materials. And this is a product. <clears throat> And the, the same year, 2018, uh, the Russian company, Anisoprint, uh, started to sell this type of the, uh, <clears throat> 3D printers that, print, that can print the uh, composite materials. Uh, I mean, the continuous fiber composite material is just uh, quite similar to the Mark Forst. And in China, uh, the fiber tech China uh, started to sell the, this kind of uh, <clears throat> machines, 3D print machines in 2019. And in the USA, uh, 2019, uh, desktop metal uh, started to sell the, this 3D printer. Uh, this is not the... Uh, fused filament uh, deposition type. Uh, this used the uh, very narrow um, pre tape. <clears throat> and Mark Forst, last year, uh, Mark Forst uh, started to sell this uh, professional use uh, 3D printers, Mark Forst FX20. Uh, maybe you can see this has uh, three nozzles. Uh, the uh, center nozzle is used to, to print the continuous uh, fibers, and uh, maybe the uh, the other one is to use the print uh, short carbon fibers or nylon. I mean the polyamide six. Uh, resins and the other one is a, uh, uh, I mean the polyethyl image. Uh, it's a uh, high. It's a plastic uh, is for the uh, high temperatures. <clears throat> so the. <clears throat> We now have this uh, commercially available uh, professional level 3D printers. However, the commercial, these commercially available 3D printers have a uh, lot of troubles so far. Uh, thus, the 3D printed composite are still developing technology. These troubles are shown uh, through my laboratory research results. So please uh, wait a little bit. And this slide showed uh, examples of the uh, 3D printed products. Uh, maybe 2018, uh, the Boeing uh, started to make the uh, wing chip of Boeing 777, but this is just a, a trial version. And as I already showed the uh, Aribo, uh, started to sell this uh, bicycles. Uh, the body of bicycles is, was uh, printed by the, uh, the very big, large 3D printers. And uh, recently, uh, this uh, airplane drone and uh, this robot uh, can be uh, printed uh, by the 3D printers. Uh, this, you can see this one in the Mark Forge uh, website, and they say that the, uh, the cost um, is very low, 95% lower cost uh, compared to the, the com, uh, conventional one, uh, one, conventional means uh, metallic uh, <coughs> robot. <clears throat> so, 
from this slide, I would like to show the uh, world's first commercially available 3D printer Mark IV, uh, Mark I. Uh, the Mark I was available from uh, in the autumn of 2015. And uh, in the Mark I, uh, they have, actually in the Mark I, uh, they have this uh, concentric type fiber placement. Only this type is uh, was available uh, in the Mark I. In the Mark II, uh, they started Mark II, the second version of 3D printer from 2019, maybe. Uh, then the machine can use this uh, UD type. So that in Mark I, in the first 3D printer, only we can a bit, we can use is the, this uh, concentric type fiber placement, <clears throat> and this showed how the this three D print uh, can print uh, the composite materials. Oh, it's too fast. <laughs> Sorry. Like this. So the uh, in the uh, very thin layers, uh, it has a uh, uh, continuous carbon fiber placement, but in the layup directions, uh, the this machine cannot uh, place uh, fibers. It's just like uh, um, conventional um, autoclave. CFRP and <clears throat> usually used in the airframe. <clears throat> so uh, this is a sample. And uh, this slide showed the uh, 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 making composite with Mark I or Mark II. Uh, the, they have two nozzles. The first one is uh, just the same as uh, uh, conventional 3D printer. <clears throat> they have uh, nylon or short carbon fiber uh, filament. The filament diameter is 1.75 millimeters. It's the same as a uh, conventional one. And the other uh, nozzle is used to print the uh, continuous fiber composite. The, this filament is a composite, uh, not the fiber. Uh, it, it is, uh, uh, this filament is uh, composite and the diameter is 0 0.5 millimeters. And of course, as this is uh, continuous carbon fibers or con continuous grass fibers uh, <clears throat> to make a, a short specimen, uh, we have to cut the uh, fibers, so the uh, fiber cutter system is uh, installed here. And this slide showed the uh, <clears throat> uh, this showed the um, cross-sectional view of the uh, CFRP filament. The diameter is 0 0.4 millimeters, and you can see this white Circus, this one is a, a carbon fibers, and the fiber volume fraction is approximately uh, 32%. And you can see this uh, comprise of the carbon fibers and uh, polyamide 6 legion. <clears throat> and this showed the uh, two types of nozzles, the nozzle of the uh, Oh, this one is uh, uh, nylon or short carbon fibers. Uh, the nozzle mm, configuration is the same as the conventional uh, FDM type, a fused deposition uh, modeling type mm, 3D printers. And uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, this is a mistake. 0 0.5 uh, nozzle diameter is uh, very small, 0 0.5. And the, the other one is a uh, nozzle uh, for the uh, to print uh, continuous uh, 
composite, I mean, the composite, uh, continuous carbon, carbon fiber composite or glass fiber composite. And uh, you can easily find that the diameter is very large. The nozzle diameter is 1.2. The official reason uh, haven't been announced why this nozzle have uh, this large diameter. <clears throat> and by using this, uh, this nozzle uh, press the CFRP filament to get the flat uh, surface. So, um, <clears throat> This uh, configuration is very different from the uh, conventional uh, 3D printers. Oh, sorry. In my mm, <coughs> laboratories, uh, first we started uh, research work in 2013. And <coughs> in 2013, we just uh, bought uh, uh, conventional 3D printers and uh, the carbon fiber is inserted uh, in the, uh, just in front of the uh, <coughs> nozzle. And may maybe this one is a, a video, yes. come from the uh, here <clears throat> and this type uh, this type of result uh, I mean the 3d printers results is first published papers uh, in 2014 uh, <clears throat> this is areas and the uh, mark forced uh, I mean the mark force started to sell the, their printers 2000 uh, 15, but uh, our uh, papers is uh, one year faster, but uh, Mark Force started to, their research in the two, uh, maybe 2012. <clears throat> so their research is faster than us. <clears throat> and uh, this result, is published in this uh, scientific report. <clears throat> okay, uh, this slide shows that my research laboratory uh, in Japan. Uh, the laboratory space is very narrow compared to the, uh, Saudi Arabia. So the uh, researchers in Japan uh, must save space like this. So when I visited House first time in 2013, uh, I was very surprised uh, that there was no self or uh, uh, clean up to and to save the space. I, I think it's a uh, it was uh, uh, Professor Robino's uh, laboratories. Uh, I was very surprised. <clears throat> okay. So from here, I would like to talk about the, uh, my research. Uh, the first one is the evaluation of tensile strengths of Mark One in 2015. Actually, the first Mark One was the open machine. Uh, it was uh, difficult to print a rectangular specimen. Even rectangular specimen, it's quite difficult to print. Uh, there is no, there was no options for the uh, slicing software either. Uh, of course, uh, of course, these are uh, modified now. So the Mark II is very good machine, but Mark I was awful. Uh, in the Mark I, uh, there is a large void like this, and of course, uh, the Mark was uh, tensile strength in the fiber direction. Uh, it has very large scatter. 
uh, this is very limited for the Mark one. In the Mark two, uh, this uh, awful result was uh, modified. Uh, the reason is uh, that uh, in the Mark one, the uh, concentric type <coughs> fiber placement is the only available. So the fiber line, for example, it started here. Then at this point, the uh, fiber line must shift inside. So this shift uh, point, I mean the fiber line shifting switching point, uh, this switching point uh, could not be controlled in the Mark I uh, slice software either. Uh, it seemed uh, placed at random uh, it, at that time. So the, uh, this uh, awful large scatter was obtained yeah, at that time. But of course, this was modified recently. And by using this, uh, we optimize the fiber line uh, because the, we can trace the, these carved uh, carbon fibers. Of course, these are, cannot be obtained if we, we use uh, prefix pre seed. Uh, of course, prefix seed has uh, straight uh, fibers, but we can uh, carve, we can use the carved fibers for the 3D printers. So <clears throat> by using carved fiber line, uh, we checked the uh, <clears throat> can we get uh, higher strength materials or not? So it, the specimen is very simple, the open hole tension test. And to express uh, freely carved fiber, fiber bundles, uh, of course the fiber bundle uh, cannot have the uh, intersection. So the, uh, we use the uh, perfect Freud streamlines uh, <clears throat> with uh, perfect Freud potential functions. So the uh, design variables are, are the source and source and sink and the current and vortex. <clears throat> so we optimize the results, uh, but the, this is limited to the uh, FEM analysis. So we did not uh, do the uh, experiments. So just uh, from the F FEM analysis, we got a 66% increase of the uh, tensile strengths. And uh, this uh, show, uh, show the uh, short fiber composite. The short fiber composite has uh, also have the anisotropic, uh, and it's quite difficult. I mean, uh, even for the tensile test specimens, it's quite difficult uh, because if we we use uh, uh, before that, uh, I would like to explain what is the wall pass and the infield pass uh, to print, for example, this specimen dumbbell type specimen fast the 3D printer prints the wall, I mean, outline of specimens like this. So this is called wall pass. And after this wall pass, the <clears throat> inside of the specimen is print, uh, printed using an infill pass. The infill pass is uh, usually used a plus minus 45 degree to prevent the uh, thermal um, deformation. So if we uh, print the specimen, uh, this is a print bed. And if we print the specimen like this, uh, this has an infill pass. So the infill pass means the uh, uh, test result will become the plus minus 45 tensile test. So if we print the specimen like this, so we can 
print the specimen only with the wall pass. So the all the print pass is along to the uh, tensile directions. So this has a very strong <clears throat> So we have to be very careful. Uh, we can easily print the specimen, but uh, uh, you can see that um, how to make the specimen is very important. And this slide showed uh, 3D print simulations using uh, moving particle semi-implicit method. Uh, this is shown in this uh, open access journal. So actually this is not shown. Uh, this is the ne next paper of this one. <clears throat> but uh, we already uh, can simulate the, uh, this um, <clears throat> fusing process, re regime melting and fusing process. And this uh, shows uh, three dimensional simulations. And you can download this video from this site. Uh, I pressed uh, this is uh, uh, copyright free, so you can use this video. Uh, <clears throat> in any case. And after this, we started to uh, checks the uh, uh, strength variation of carved fiber bundles. Uh, first, we started uh, without using nozzle, uh, just we make the carved um, filament. Then uh, we found that if we don't pay attention to the printing process, that means we, if we don't use the uh, nozzle, the curvature of the print pass has no effect on strength. Initial curvature uh, has no effect. <clears throat> and uh, the different results will be obtained uh, the, if we print using nozzles. <clears throat> but uh, that one is uh, talked. Uh, just a little bit later. Uh, this slide showed the uh, it. Uh, we just started to make a special joint. Uh, it has uh, high strengths and high reliable strength. Uh, high reliable joint. Uh, this <coughs> result is. Uh, joint strengths, uh, the ordinate is joint strengths. And if we, we use adhesive, uh, the strength itself is very high in some case, but uh, uh, in some case, it has uh, uh, low <coughs> strength. So the reliability of the adhesive um, joint is very low. And if, if we use a metallic board, the uh, Scatter, data scatter is very small, so the reliability is very high, but the strength itself is very low. So <clears throat> we modified the uh, joint by using 3D printers. You can see this uh, zigzag shape on the surface, and female type and male type zigzag uh, <clears throat> shape is uh, matched like this. Then uh, after that, uh, we put the, uh, this special pin in, oh, sorry, in the, this uh, holes. And after that, we put the uh, caps uh, like this. So the joint become like this. So the in shared direction, this uh, zigzag shape, they are the shared load and the, to prevent the uh, detach of the uh, joint, this pin uh, works very well. So the uh, 
joint strength is very high compared to the uh, adhesives and the strength, the scatter of the strength is quite similar to the metallic bolt. <clears throat> this is uh, just an uh, example of innovative structures uh, that can only be made with uh, 3D printers. This video showed uh, also snap instructions. Uh, you can print this uh, mail type, mail type, exact shape on the uh, specimens. <coughs> And just like this, we, we can make the sandwich structures very easily. <clears throat> oh, sorry. And uh, I don't have enough time. So we made uh, specimens in the different uh, directions and conducted very uh, various tensile tests. Uh, the, uh, with using the continuous carbon fibers, uh, the zero degree specimen means the carbon fiber locates in these directions, and 19 degree specimen means the carbon fibers locates in these directions. So the tensile load is applied in these directions, and the layup direction means, uh, uh, of course, in the layup directions we cannot place the fibers in the layup direction, so the fi carbon fiber locates heat in these directions. So the, uh, we measure the strengths and uh, in zero degree, it has a, a very high strengths and in the 19 degrees, it has small strengths. And please uh, <coughs> watch this one is uh, in the layup directions, the strengths is very small compared to the 19 degrees. And the, Please be careful. Uh, you can find uh, many published research articles in the many journals, and they usually use this type of 90 degree price specimens, but uh, this is magnified, uh, zoomed. Uh, in the <coughs> Mark Forst uh, Thrice Software IGA, uh, in the 19 degree, even in the 19 degree specimen, uh, these uh, fiber carved areas are included in the uh, specimen. So this has zero degree fibers around here. Oh, I, I have to watch the chat. No. Oh, Q and A. Okay. Uh, the first question is uh, maybe you can, I you, you can address the question later after you have finished. Oh, yes, okay. thank you. I will answer later. <clears throat> In these carved areas, uh, oh, this is nine, 95 degrees uh, specimen, so just a little bit different in the 90 degree. So the, uh, the this uh, area, uh, this uh, we used uh, gas burner uh, to burn the uh, resin, and we found that um, fiber breakage here. So the um, <clears throat> the specimen include this one has uh, um, largely affected to the uh, fiber covered area. So the um, the published research articles uh, that include these um, carved areas are not reliable. <clears throat> we cut this area. And uh, uh, many research articles uh, cannot measure the layup direction because if you want to make, I mean, the fabricate the specimens like this, 
we have to make the, a tall specimen, but the nozzle movement here in, in this direction, the large moment uh, applied to the specimens uh, because the regime viscosity uh, transfers the uh, force of nozzle movement to the specimens in these directions. So this causes the uh, moment. So uh, this attached area is detached. So the, uh, this specimen is falling. <clears throat> so it is quite difficult to make a uh, long specimens to measure the layup uh, reaction strength. So the many research paper uh, did not uh, measure the uh, layup direction strengths. So uh, we use uh, this rectangular tube uh, to print the uh, layup directions. Uh, this has a uh, long uh, attached uh, place and <clears throat> Of course, this is very strong against the more bending moment, so that <clears throat> we can make the uh, long spacements like this. So we measured the uh, layer projections, but uh, in the layer projections, uh, even for the Mark II, uh, the large scatter is observed. Uh, this is caused by the void and the weak fusion strengths between the past. <clears throat> And of course, the strength of the layer projection is only one fourth of the uh, strength of 90 degree specimen. So, uh, in the another uh, research paper, we proposed uh, uh, reinforcing process in the layer projections. Uh, as we use the 3D printers, uh, we can print the products with hole. So <clears throat> after printing this uh, product, uh, we print uh, unidirectional, um, just a single bar, and insert this bar and apply the uh, high direct electric current. Then the uh, carbon fiber is uh, just becomes a heater so that we can op uh, have the high temperatures and the, this oh sorry this bar is fused to the uh, this part so the uh, <clears throat> by using this method uh, we can obtain the very high strengths in the layer projections uh, in the specimen we had a 400% increase <clears throat> in the layer projections and uh, we did another one, uh, strength evaluation of the curved sections. Uh, the curved mm, area, the fiber twist will occur. So we observed the fiber breakage uh, I already showed uh, and the void. So the evaluation of mechanical properties of the curved section is necessary. So we proposed uh, L configuration type, L shaped specimen like this. And we did the uh, tensile test, but uh, uh, even in the tensile test, this specimen, uh, the bending moment is applied in this specimen. So the actually, uh, this specimen was broken uh, by the compression uh, load. <clears throat> Compression side break fast. And the fracture stress is shown here. The radius of the uh, curved section, when the radius of the curved section becomes small, then the uh, <coughs> fracture stress becomes small because the uh, defects like a fiber breakage or void. Uh, affect this uh, strength. So we checked the fiber breakage in the curved, curved direction, curved area. Uh, in the curved area, you can see the fiber twisting here. And uh, after this, uh, we dissolve the polyamide 6 by using the 
special uh, chemical agent. Then <coughs> we can find that fiber breakage is outside of this uh, uh, this area. And this slide showed uh, how this uh, carbon fiber breakage occurs. So the uh, abrasion caused, uh, you can see this already printed part and the print head used in this direction. But this <coughs> edge has a very high shear strength, a high shear stress is applied. <coughs> so this fiber breakage occurs. And this slide shows uh, self-sensing. Uh, we started to measure the uh, strain, applied strain by using uh, this uh, 3D printed composite, but uh, the result is very strange <laughs> compared to the uh, pre preg CFRP. Uh, this uh, broken curve shows the applied st uh, stress and the audience shows the uh, number of cycles, I mean, the time, time. And this solid curve shows the uh, electric resistance change. And you can see the electric resistance decrease with the uh, applied load, <coughs> applied cycle. And this, becomes constant, uh, maybe approximately hundreds, hundreds like or a thousand uh, cycles. <coughs> uh, I would like to omit because I don't have enough time. So the, uh, <coughs> this slide showed the, uh, another research work. Uh, even for the Mark Forst, uh, we check the infill um, print pass, and we found this uh, large gap between the uh, print pass. And this caused that short carbon fibers uh, cause uh, clogging at the nozzle outlets. So this caused uh, slipping at the extruder gear. So this slipping caused the shortage of materials. So this called the uh, gap. So <clears throat> uh, by changing the uh, print conditions, uh, we can prevent this uh, large gap. And this slide showed the uh, effect of temperatures. Uh, we conducted the relaxation tests uh, at the 155 degrees Celsius and the mark force uh, polyamide 6, short fiber polyamide 6, Onyx is, has uh, almost uh, in very short, within a very short time, or becomes uh, uh, force is becomes almost zero. So the, this uh, cannot be used at the high temperature applications. <clears throat> and finally, uh, we, we produced uh, new um, products, uh, new 3D printers to prevent, uh, I already talked talk, uh, problem. Uh, we've developed a novel 3D printer that prints uh, continuous carbon fibers and short carbon fibers at the same time from just one nozzle. Uh, Mark Force used two nozzles. Uh, they cannot print at the same time. Uh, and the fiber volume fraction can be changed during printing. Mark force cannot be changed. And the void ratio is less than uh, 2%. Uh, in the Mark force, the void ratio is still 7%. And the higher uh, interlaminar strengths, I mean the layer projections. Uh, this video showed the Thank you.
And this uh, showed that uh, interlaminar shear test, uh, conventional one is here, and the, this one has uh, two times uh, higher strength. <clears throat> and the future work, uh, I need um, more experimental data uh, to apply these 3D printers for the actual products. and. Uh, I need a development of the processing simulation. Uh, this is almost completed. And uh, we have to know the how to how to decide the factor of safety. Uh, this is talked in the later. And uh, how to design the 3D printed composite is very important. And I think this for this, we must use uh, evolutionary optimizations process. <clears throat> And of course, a more experimental data of self-sensing 3D printed composites is required because the, for the uh, 3D printed products, it usually has uh, complex configuration stru structures like uh, metamaterials. So that we need uh, wireless self-sensing technologies. Uh, this slide shows the uh, example of metamaterial, not the composite material, but the, uh, we, by using 3D printers, we usually use complex structures like uh, mechanical metamaterials. And uh, so the, um, <clears throat> we need this uh, self-sensing technologies. And of course we can uh, add some much functional, uh, I mean, the sensor is embedded or actually is embedded during the 3D printing process. So the important point of uh, 3D printed composite is how to design the mechanical products using 3D printed composites. Uh, the important issue is large scatter, data scatter. And this is uh, uh, just uh, expected, expected answer. Uh, the factor of safety of composite products is already mm, proposed in the Japanese Society of Reinforced Plastics. Uh, this is a, a partial safety factor. And uh, this the last one, L5, is a scatter of strengths considering the fabrication process. So the uh, 3D printers, we have to decide this L5 <coughs> by conducting a uh, large number of experiments. This is the future uh, <coughs> work. And uh, finally, uh, let me give short time for advertisement. Uh, let me advertise. I, I will uh, make my new company uh, within a couple of months and I will build the company uh, which deal with my new 3D printers. And I will do the consultant on the 3D printed composite or composite structures. And the, the company website is here. Uh, the name is, looks like to do meta composite, uh, but this to do is not to do. Uh, it's a, a family name of mine, my name, uh, Todoroki. So the uh, pronunciation of this company name is Todo Meta Composite. <clears throat> ah, so I, I will welcome customers of 3D printers and the uh, consultations and the, as well as investments. <laughs> and this is a uh, website, uh, todometacomposite.com. Uh, this Todo, means uh, uh, comes from the uh, family name, first four letters, Todo, and Meta Composite. <clears throat> so finally, let's do the international cooperative research. And uh, thank you very much. And I have to answer 
questions? Yes. Thank you very much, Professor Todoroki, for a very interesting and very nice talk about the 3D printed composite materials. So I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I'm sure the audience has a lot of questions. So, uh, Jill, if you'd like to start to ask questions or you have comments and um, uh, Jeff, sorry, I, I cannot leave. <laughs> okay, first question is, dear Professor, I have a question about Mark Force printer. It seems to force us to put a layer of neat plastic on the outside of a part. Do you know why this is the case and how do you make your measurement independent from it? Ah, yes. So maybe this question is the mark force is forced to place the, I mean, the wall path uh, as a plastic or a short carbon fiber uh, plastic. Uh, so the just the surface of the space pen. Uh, actually, the answer is very uh, easy. Uh, to prevent the uh, displacement of the uh, plastic or onikis, I mean the short fiber compo composite materials, uh, just to remove <laughs> the filament before printing. And the printer uh, does not check the filament, existing of filament. So the, uh, we just put the start. Then the uh, printer start the printing. Uh, the printer think the uh, it has the printer has a, a plastic filament, but the, of course there is no plastic filament, so we can um, print the uh, specimen without uh, plastic on the surface. But please be careful that uh, at the initial uh, point, it's quite uh, difficult to start the uh, continuous fiber uh, because uh, may I use some, um, yes. For example, uh, uh, if we print these, specimens like these continuous fibers without mm, plastic, uh, the Mac force first prints the uh, <clears throat> I mean, polyamid plastic, uh, first layer is plastic. And after, on the plastic layer, the print, they print the, uh, these mm, continuous carbon fibers because uh, the carbon fibers uh, easily uh, attached to the bed, print bed, with this uh, melted uh, pre, uh, plastics. So if, if, we, if we remove the uh, plastic, the, uh, this carbon fiber uh, cannot attach the uh, print bed. So we use two methods. May I use this? <laughs> Long time. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Yes, please. To answer this, uh, it's, it requires a very long time. Uh, the first one is uh, just prints the first mm, plastic layer, and we stop, and we have to remove the uh, plastic filament. Then after this, uh, the printer print like this, only the carbon fibers. The, after the mm, specimen has finished, then we can remove this uh, fast plastic uh, because the, uh, uh, the, it's quite difficult, but the, mm, the size of the, this carbon area and the size of the fast area is uh, initially different. I mean, we have to design the very strange specimen uh, configuration like this.
like this. So the first several um, layers has uh, plastic, and after this, uh, the carbon fiber layers. And of course, we remove the. Uh, <coughs> after, after printing this layer, we remove the uh, plastic uh, filament. So the uh, this uh, outer layer in plastic cannot be printed. Then we can easily remove this plastic frame from the uh, this specimen. And the second one is uh, we have to um, pierce some kind of these specimen. And the first printing here, I mean, this printing area, uh, we have to um, carbon fiber. Uh, we have to um, attach the carbon fibers on the bed by our hand. <laughs> it's quite difficult, but uh, this is just a uh, um, pre-printing region. After this, uh, the printer can print this specimen, and we have, can cut this area. So there are two ways to print the uh, uh, specimens without a uh, uh, nylon um, wall. Uh, can you understand? If you yeah. cannot understand, uh, please uh, send me email. <clears throat> but I think yeah, I think I think uh, Mark Ports uh, uh, two. They have this uh, facility that you need you require to, to print the outer walls first, at least two layers. And then after that, you have to print the, the actual mm -hmm. specimens, right? So in order for you to avoid to have that, so you, you basically, I mean, by default, you need to do it. And then, uh, and then the, sec, uh, the, the tricks that you provided was just to cut or just to remove before you even do the test. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you print a different contour of the specimens, right? Yeah. So we have to use a very um, tricky way Uh, yeah, to print uh, specimens without a plastic film, plastic uh, surface. So the another one is... It's about the optimization process that you use in your paper, fiber line optimization in single ply for 3D printed composites. So you use this optimization process, right, or technique. So can you actually discuss about this process briefly? Fiber line... Actual Yes, uh, by using Mark Force, we cannot actually manufacture uh, this is mm, yeah. probably in it, the page 20. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's take a very long time. Yes. yes. Actually, it's uh, impossible to print this one. So. Of course, I uh, in our laboratory, we print uh, this one, but the, you can see the very big, uh, large gap between print pass. Mm -hmm. So the, this, is, this specimen cannot be applied to the tensile test. Uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> we developed the new 3D printers that, that can um, change the uh, fiber volume fraction. That means we, we can change the uh, plastic or short carbon fibers, onikis, uh, at any place. So for example, if we print these areas, we, we can extrude the uh, large amount of plastic, mm. then we can print by using a new 3D printer. Of course, uh, using the uh, Mark IV 3D printer, we cannot uh, 
prints uh, this one. <clears throat> so there right. are other one. Yeah, the third one is related to, are there any printers operating with two nozzles that can print, uh, like for example, woven, woven, uh, woven fabric with interlock bundles? Have you ever uh, encountered? I'm sorry. Uh, are uh, there any English. printers? Yeah. Are there any printers operating with two nozzles to print CFRP woven fabric with interlock bundles? Oh, this one, yes. yes are like... there any printers operating with two nozzles to print the CFRP woven fabric with interlocked bundles? Uh, actually, in, in, by using this uh, process, it's quite difficult. Uh, so there is no uh, 3D printers uh, that use nozzle, but the, of course uh, we can use a uh, fabric uh, prepreg uh, to print uh, the, mm, I mean the composite parts. Uh, I talked about the uh, uh, desktop metal, they use, uh, uh, prepaid tape to print the uh, <clears throat> composite parts. Of course, the uh, I mean the uh, minimum size is limited to the tape uh, tape wide, but uh, <clears throat> they can print the uh, composite um, urban composite uh, by using the prepaid tape, and that is another way. And I think some companies in German, uh, they have that like, uh, I mean, the stacking uh, some plastic prepack of the uh, urban carbon fibers. Uh, they called um, uh, 3D printers, but uh, it's just an automatic uh, uh, layup machine. <laughs> So actually, in the FDM type, uh, I mean, uh, fused deposition modeling type um, 3D printers, there is no um, 3D printers uh, that can print the uh, fabric composite. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tedoroki. So, uh, Jill, do you have any uh, questions, remarks? Comments. Yeah, th th thank you very much, Akira, for this uh, very inspiring uh, presentation. So, what what do you, you you say that you are going to open your new company on on three D printing? Uh, so, what do you think of the of the future when it comes to traditional manufacturing techniques compared to three D printing? So, that means what what do you think is going to be the business or the market between? what is going to be 3D printed and what is going to be still, you know, classical tape, filament winding, classical manufacturing technique. You think that things are going to change? Everything is going to become 3D printed? I mean, what is, what do you, how do you see the future? Yeah. Uh, actually, the uh, main target of the, uh, main target is maybe the uh, robots or, um, I, I think uh, in the first page, maybe, yes. Yes, this one. The main market will be, be the uh, robot like this and uh, drones like this. <clears throat> uh, they, they can, the uh, parts is not so large, uh, it's a small size and uh, mm, they want to use some complicated, complex mm, shape structures. And <clears throat> so the main target of these uh, 3D printers, firstly, the, the main target will become this uh, robots or uh, drone, or some sports uh, like this 
bicycles or um, automobiles or another one is yes i heard that is some kind of helmet for the sports i mean baseball helmets uh okay yeah these are the fast products i yeah so that means there will still be a, a lot of room for for say classical manufacturing technique but for for large scale classical products like piping or things like this but but when it comes to very expensive specialized products then then the 3d printed architecture can become interesting right yeah okay that's good very very, very nice presentation very inspiring yes, very nice thank you so much thank you Thank you. Uh, do you have any more questions from the audience? I think we have, if you have any questions, you can uh, type your questions here. So we have, I'll just give you uh, probably two minutes. So uh, Professor Todorok is very, uh, I have, I have a one, one question related to the, to the porosity of voids that uh, you might, that you usually generate using 3D printers. So, how do you do you have any techniques to improve or to reduce the the, the voids for printing composites? Do you have any? Yeah, because uh, this is always a main problem uh, yes. in three D printing. Right? In the mark voids, the void rate is approximately seven um, percent, yeah. and uh, in my new three D printers, the void is two uh, percent. So the, there is a new technology to reduce the void. But uh, unfortunately, uh, it's uh, now, uh, I, I'm now, uh, I mean, the, before submitting a patent to the <laughs> Japanese of office, so the, I, I cannot say uh, right here, but uh, there is a, a new technology. Yeah, of course. Okay. <clears throat> right, so it's still proprietary at the moment. Right? <laughs> It's <laughs> still secret. <laughs> I cannot say. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. So if you have more questions, you are free to send emails to Professor Todoroki. So he, he, he will address your questions after this uh, conference. So if you don't have any more questions, uh, I will thank Professor Todoroki for his time, for his very inspiring presentations today about 3D printing composite materials. Or I hope we can uh, collaborate in the future. Thank you very much for all the audience. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. So, thank you.